Hey everybody, it's your pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences, bringing you Monday Minutes on a Wednesday. I'm a little behind, I got a lot of projects I'm still finishing up on, but I haven't forgotten you. I do try to keep it as consistent as possible, uh, but it's December and that means people need help. And a lot of help this year. And that's okay. Alright, so I want to thank everybody for leaving the comments they did on last week's Monday Minutes about aliases. Uh, what I consider a game changer for working in x lights for people that map a lot of sequences. And uh, I've gotten to spend a little more time with it this morning. And I wanted to do a follow-up video showing some results and talk about some practices that you can employ when you are working with aliases. And keep in mind, this is the first iteration of aliases. I have a sneaky feeling we're gonna see enhancements added to aliases uh, as we go. But um, I didn't want to be super comfortable and just use my models that I know very well, which are all the Gilbert Engineering USA models that I love and rock in my show, and will continue to do so, because I love them. But I have some models here that some of you may recognize, others may not. Uh, some people have a lot of different variety of models from various vendors, and some people stick to one, and it's whatever you like to do, man. It's your world. So you'll see here that I have these uh, SS flakes. These are the, I think, the showstopper flakes. So I have two of everything. Uh, these are the infinities from Charlie's Props, I believe. Um, this would be the Mesmerizer, Ice Queen, Bell uh, wreath, and the Boscoyo wreath. Those are all Boscoyos, okay? And some of these, like the Infinity and the Showstopper Flakes, uh, I went in here and made some changes. I didn't, well, not changes, but I like to make submodel groups the way I have been for the last, I don't know, seven years or so. And that is to put individual elements of that submodel, like spoke one, two, three, four, five, six, into a group. Well, these flakes, they do things a little bit differently. And uh, it's, it's sort of an odd, it's odd to me. It's, it's not my cup of tea at all. But uh, what I will do is I'll take something like their snowflake one, I'll right click on this and simply say, great, go to a group because I can map my stuff to a group, and most sequencers can too. So I did that with the Infinity from Charlie's Props, uh, and then also this Showstopper thingy here. All right, so I've done that throughout. And then what I did is I went to the groups up here, and let's just start with this Infinity, or let's see here, yeah, yeah. So this Infinity Eggs. I went in here and decided that I would put some aliases together. So this one I'm using the GE Star-Lord Plunger. A lot of them I just use the eaves for simplicity. And you can put a lot of stuff in here. If, if, if I put two different models in here, let's say I put the Plunger Large, but then I could also add my eaves group, which would be eaves GRP. Now that's easy, but what if I have some pretty complicated naming uh, from my submodel groups. Well, let me show you what I do. And this makes very, very quick work of this. Is if I have something like this Starbush uh, Extreme Cross Section Group, let's see how long this is. Boop, 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 let's scoot you over. Come on, you're not gonna play. Uh, what I'll do is just right click on it, rename, and then I'll simply hit Command or Control C. I'll copy this, click, click Cancel. I don't need this anymore. And then I'll come back over here and I'll click Add, Control V. There you go. So what happens is if there's effects in the Eves group, which is at the, it just is at the top of the list here, I believe, it'll grab that. If it doesn't see any Eves, then it will grab the Starburst and then so on and so on. So uh, play around with that to see how that does. I'm going to leave this like this. We'll see what kind of hot mess we might get. So I've done this with everything. Most everything has just one submodel group alias, and I've left it at that. Of course, uh, all of the groups, such as the uh, SS group here, you'll see I've created an alias, the Rosa Grande group, and I've put that in there. Uh, some of them may have different aliases, uh, depending on the type. For instance, this Mesmerizer here, 
I believe I'm using for an alias. Da, 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 da. Oh, whoop, very, very top. Let me scoot this guy up here. There we go. Uh, let me go find the aliases up here. Mesmerizer, mesmerizer. There we go. Oop, I didn't find it yet. There it is. Uh, in the aliases here, I'm using GE Grand Illusion Group. Why am I using the GE Grand Illusion Group? Well, the GE Grand Illusion Group is a native model. And because there are a lot of concentric rings on the mesmerizer, even though it's not a native model, uh, it works better for the whole group effects. And we can look over here and we can see, oh, you know what? I was wrong. I was wrong. This is a native model. I don't know why I was thinking it was not, but it is a native model. So therefore, keeping your groups that contain models that are native, trying to map over other native model groups like the Grand Illusion to the Mesmerizer are going to give you much better results. So I'm glad I double checked that and that would make sense why that's working and why it didn't when I tried to use an alias for a non-native model group like the Rosa Grande, okay? All right, so there we go. I've got that done. Let's bring in a sequence. So what I'm gonna do here, <clears throat> let's do this. Let's just create a new sequence. I'm gonna discard any changes of anything else I was doing. We're gonna go over here to our audio. We're gonna bring in Everybody Loves Christmas. 40 frames, sure, why not? And then I'm going to import, import effects. I'm going to go to my lovely NAS, go to my drive, go in here, find all of these, whoop, here we go, package sequences. And I'm gonna scroll down to everybody loves Christmas. And it's this guy right here. So this opens up the mapping dialog box, right? So. For those of you who have mapped what I will say the old way where you drag and drop or double click or launch a mapping file, I've sort of just put the mapping, this process on the front end at the group level or the model level or both, okay? So if I hit auto map, you're gonna see it's gonna bring over a bunch of things. There's all my pixels, eaves, blah, blah, blah. But when we get down here to the groups for these new models that I don't really know very well, I know the Boscoyo ones better than I do everything else. I've never even worked with those really before. Um, so they're a bit of a mystery. So Mesmerizer, Ice Queen, Bellflower, and then you have the SS Snowflake, you have the, uh, the, the Infinity, and there you go. And it's put things in there. And I'm gonna click OK, okay. And then I'm going to render this and we'll see what we get. Now, here's the caveat to this. You could take 15 different sequencers with the same sequence, the same song, even the same effects, but they may be very different because of the rendering styles employed or layering methods employed for that sequence at that model level or group model level or sub model group level. So you have to pay attention to things. And because I've mapped over so much, it might be too busy, maybe, right? It may be great, but we're gonna see. So what I'm gonna do here is I better bring this guy right down here into place. There we go. Much, much better, so we can see that. Uh-oh, we got the spinning wheel of death. The max spinning wheel of death. Will it pull out? I don't know. I just don't know. Let's see. Let's see. If I click force quit, X lights is not responding. For those of you that accuse me of being a Mac lover, shame on you. This is the stuff that happens to me, just like it would in Windows. Not nearly as much, but X lights will still crash in Mac for no apparent reason. All I did was drag a window down into place. So, what do you do? You put the video on pause and then you restart this crap and try again. Hold on. Okay, we're back after that unexpected crash. It happens, it happens in both platforms, I assure you. So we're back to the mapping part where I selected auto map 
click OK, and it gets us to this. Uh, probably what I'm going to do right now, just because I don't trust it not crashing, I'm just going to call this Everybody Loves Christmas uh, Alias Test. We'll just leave it at that, and we will save this. Just because if it crashes again, at least I've got this part saved. Well, we have to render this, so I'm going to render this. And as I said before, uh, the various aspects of creating a sequence using render styles and layers and blendings and whatnot can be different across the board for everybody who creates sequences, whether you're a professional sequencer or a hobbyist just sequencing for yourself or sequences that you pick up from other people who have shared sequences. All right, uh, here's some things I'm gonna suggest you do. First thing, because I'm using a view and it says main sequence view, we don't see any timing. So first thing I'm gonna do is go to edit display elements and most of mine are going to have a new timing, which I would suggest you bring over here. By doing so, I can turn this new timing on and off, which allows me to grab things or select this and move it down, move it up, and that that's fine. Um, we can go down here and start looking at some of the things that we're interested in, which would be these SS uh, spinners and whatnot, and check out some of the effects. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play this from the beginning, and we're going to look at some things, and I'll stop along the way uh, for us to kind of take a peek at things. So I'm going to put this here where we can see it pretty well. I'm not worried about any of the stuff going on down here. So we're going to play it from the beginning. And my audio is going to be silent. Let's just focus on the effects. Okay. Uh, ignore the windows. We'll talk about that in a moment and why you're seeing that, the window white thing that I can't stand. But I'm seeing, for the most part, these look pretty good out of the gate. Okay, let's go to another section. I don't know if I dig that. It's okay. Uh, maybe too much going on there. That looks fine. You can just imagine the music. That looks really good. Mesmerizer looks good with that. Copying a lot of the effects you would see on the Grand Illusion. But also all the submodel groups in there doing its thing. Let's get over here. There we go. It's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, let's get over here. Let's get into some problem area. You're about to see something here. This. Could you imagine putting this in your show. That looks horrible. That's horrible. And why does it look horrible? Because it looks really good on your eaves. But I put the eaves group in a lot of these submodel groups. But when you're using marquee, you have to be careful. So that's something we're going to want to change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this area. I'm going to put a right click in the numbers up here and put one. Like that's something I want to pay attention to. Then we'll go through here, look at everything else. That's looking pretty good, looking pretty good. No complaints there. Okay, that's all right, that's all right, great. So let's put this off to the side. Uh, let me show you how to fix these windows first off, if you run into this. My matrices, my pixel matrices, also have a Windows submodel uh, in them. And regular Windows models sort of looks at it differently. So if we go to our Windows model, I'll just show you this as an example of a thick, quick way that you can fix this if you're seeing it in yours. And this is always with these single strands. Okay, so that's Windows. I'm going to scoot this in here to where it gets really faster. Uh, I think right over here. See how this is going back and forth, left to right? Mm -mm. That's because it's using overlay center. And because this is a sub-model of the pixel matrix, uh, the window pixel matrix, it's doing that. Watch what happens when I turn this to vertical per model. You're going to see this 
change. Oh, I just changed the wrong one, didn't I? Windows. There we go. Vertical per model. Maybe we'll put this one back on overlay. Ah, there we go. There we go. Now you can see this spinning around. If I click on the next one, you'll see it's sort of a mess. So what I'll do is I'll select all of these, right click on render style, bulk edit, change them all to vertical per model. And now when we play this section, now they're all doing what they're supposed to. whoop de whoop de whoop de whoop de So what I would recommend is that uh, you can click this and select all of these going across and, and all of these and just change them to vertical per model. Uh, these are going to be okay, but if I change all of these to vertical per model, let's just take a look. I think we'll be fine with that. And let's just click on this. Looks good to me. And that's what I would do. All right, back to the aliases. Let's see what's going on here. This is one of the coolest things about aliases. It, let's just get over here to our SS group. So if we look here, this is the fireworks. You can see these here. The model preview window is always gonna show you the effect that you've selected, what it's doing independent of everything else. And that is a must have. It's a must need to understand. Uh, that's infinity. If we click on this, this is the fireworks. Let's get that over a little bit. And that looks okay. Here's the nice thing. If you don't like what the effect is doing there, you can always add it somewhere else. So what if I create three layers above here and I'm not liking this? I could just take all of this. Well, that's five layers. Is it one, two, three, that's four. I could exit out. I could put it here and see what it looks like. And maybe that's more interesting. Or what if I wanna put this section here, this, this effect here, the bars, put it down below, I'm always gonna click above. Oh, see, that's additive. So I'm gonna also select this and put it up here because this is impacting this. But maybe I leave these up here. So now I get this, opens it up, makes it a little more creative. You could do this across all the submodel groups you like. And with this particular spinner, there's a billion Submodels, way, way too many, I think. But I mean, that's because I would go just one less than a billion. All right, let's go to the next one. Infinity, the infinity group. So this whole thing's spinning. I love the way that looks. That's cool. We go to the eggs group. That's kind of cool. Uh, looks like we've got some meteors here. Uh, that's interesting. That might be, that's okay there. I'm not, I, you know, maybe I'd be curious to see what the meteors looks like somewhere else. Whoa, whoa, that is interesting. You know what, sky's the limit, you get to play. But the cool thing is all the effects are put where you want them. So you could sort of just move things around, uh, copy, paste, cut, paste, and just keep going until you find something that looks really good. And then just go to the next section. And if you find something that doesn't work like this, <laughs> um, this starts to be a hot mess. Now, this effect here on the bell arms, that does work. So let's go find something that doesn't. Yeah, yeah, that, that doesn't. So what can we do? Well, this is using overlay center. So first thing you might wanna do is try vertical per model per preview. And that sort of starts making it more interesting. We've got a horizontal. It's just gonna do the opposite. It's just gonna go the other way. Right, so you could go in here to the band size, but now you're getting into sequencing, right? You know, it's a little beyond mapping. Something that might be easier is simply replace this with a single strand. I know it's crazy, but if I click on the marquee on the left, I could just go over here to the S section, go find my single strand, click on that, and then maybe put in a couple, maybe change the size, Maybe put in, I don't know, four. Give it a little fade. There we go. Maybe make the chase size a little bit longer. Okay, yeah. So something like that is gonna look a little bit nicer. So while I have that selected, maybe I'm gonna go find another bad one. This one, let's, let's just see. Yeah, that's a hot mess. So while I have this selected, all I have to do is grab this little button over here, that effect, drag and drop it on top, and now it's gonna be doing the same thing. But it's a different model group. It's a different type of model group. That vertical per model may just fall apart on here and you need to go back to overlay centered. 
and then you're probably going to get something that looks a little more consistent. And again, I'm going to go over here, probably play with this, maybe make it a little bit faster, maybe a lot more faster. Mm. But anyway, you get the idea. You can start playing around with these submodel groups. And I'm not familiar with these submodel groups, so I'm sort of winging it. So while that's there, I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. And we're just going to gamble now. We're just, I'm not going to do that with the arches. No, no, no. Uh, that was the bell arms, which we said looked okay. I'm going to put this over here. And you can just mix this up. The other thing that you could do, I have a candle effect that looks really good. Uh, you might just throw that on, on the center. So maybe I just take this, throw this here. There you go. Maybe I'll go up here and grab this one again. And remember, this is just one section at a time. And maybe I'm gonna grab this candle and put this here, because I know that's probably not gonna look great. Maybe I'm gonna put this here. And then I'm gonna go back up, grab this, and just put this here. Oh my gosh, there's more, there's more. And, and the other thing that can be very powerful, delete, delete the effect. You just, you may not even need it. There just may be way too much going on and it's, it's easier to delete than try to spend hours trying to make it do something super industry, interesting. So I'm gonna play from this section here. We're gonna bust this out and we're gonna look at this transition and see, does it look better? <laughs> yeah, it looks better. It looks so much better. And it was simple to do, and we still have movement. Nothing that's too distracting. Lots of fill in here. We could probably shave some of that off. That This looks like a... It looks like a flake. It looks like a, a queen flake. Yeah, there you go. Nothing too overstated here. And then we're back into the sequence. Boom. Okay, cool. So let's get you back over here, and let's just save the sequence. So you could spend as much time as you want dialing this in. You could spend time mapping things, or you might even realize that uh, in here, you hate the way the outward uh, alias works. You may think to yourself, okay, look, the alias that I've got in here isn't working. So you can go change this. You can go to the add and put something else in there, and then you could go map that. Here's what I'm gonna tell you to be somewhat careful. Try to get that part done ahead of time because once you start making changes in the sequence and then you map and then you tell it to erase all the old stuff, you might also erase some of the good work you've done. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Maybe save a version of this here and there until you get more comfortable with that, okay? But it just takes some experimentation. And I would say start off easy. Start with simple things like eaves, things that you know are always moving on the house or uh, like props like arms from a flake that are gonna be on arms on some other XYZ model that may be new to your show, okay? Or if you're getting sequences like mine for the first time, but you don't have any Gilbert Engineering models, you have uh, all these others or you've made your own, then experiment with some like-for-like -like type of submodel groups. Make sure your native models stay with your native models and your custom models stay with your custom when we talk about submodel groups and you'll thank yourself. The question is, will this be of value to you to use the aliases? Or do you prefer just to sort of drag and double click in every sequence? You'll have to do that unless you use the, the mapping file. Here's where the mapping file falls apart. Mapping file will be great maybe for a sequencer that has consistently sequenced the same thing the same way. Uh, and for instance, I might have a mega tree where I'm doing strings, but that's not gonna be in every sequence. And because it's an artistic endeavor, uh, a lot of really good sequencers like to mix it up and do something different and be creative from one sequence to the next, not just window wipers on everything and starburst or, you know, just the same explosions across every model to the beat. I don't care how good the beat is. After a while, it just gets old and boring. So 
I think the better sequencers like to be creative and throw things at it. That's why the HD model uh, revolution that myself and GE really took by the horns uh, to get us where we're at today uh, was impactful then, and I think it still is. I think that's why it's important to spend some time. And with what me with what Marion Cherry did with creating the submodels, there's no excuse not to have amazing submodel groups anymore in X Lights. Now, what you do with them. Everybody does it differently, and the naming conventions are different, and this is why the alias is, is such a game changer. It's because you can train all your groups and submodels and submodel groups to know that I can auto map and get it over. And then I can delete, move, push things up and down. I can have complete control of it without having to always go back to the mapping dialog window. And, okay, let's try this one. Oh, and now I've got my save mapping version 7-1361 South. <laughs> Like the naming conventions, <laughs> the crazy naming conventions just should stop. I'm tired. It's, it's just nuts. Okay. It's just nuts. Okay. Anyway, not to make fun of anybody. Never call anyone's baby ugly. Even if it is ugly, that's not nice. Let's get back to this. Please tell me your thoughts on this. Tell me, do you, for those of you that have had a week or so, or had a week yeah, or so to work with this, have you noticed any benefit or is it just not working for you? I want to know. I'm not here to help you waste time. I'm here to help you save time. My job as an educator is to try to make life a little bit easier in x Lights while humanizing it and hopefully inspiring you to want to have better sequences in your shows. That's all I've got for you. I'm Ron. It's been Monday Minutes. We'll catch you next time.